So I think it'll be good for me to do it twice. Let me do it once with uh, GPT-4. I'll be cheating. Um, so, you know, you shouldn't be cheating. It's what I'm demonstrating. Demonstrating is not actually demonstrating anything that anybody should be doing. Don't do it. Um, you all regret it. So, um, but, uh, so let me do it. I, I, I'm gonna, again, not as a demo. Now, so if you wanted to use generative AI in an academically honest way, I do believe that is possible. But the way to do it wouldn't be while you are taking this, you know, no outside help during the 10 minutes you're doing it. But I do recommend that with your three attempts that you study between the attempts. And after you do this, maybe you got, you know, six out of 10 right and you want to study. You want to see which ones did I miss and why. That's the setting where you can use generative AI, AI I think, effectively and in an academically honest way. You can uh, ask uh, perplexity or other generative AI, you know, I, I have this question. I answered it this way. Did I get it right? And, you know, kind of treat it as a virtual tutor. I do think that's possible because it, it is right a lot. So. So for our purposes right now, let me test how well this answers and we'll move from there. Uh, and today it's been kind of slow, so I hope we'll have enough time to answer all 10 questions through perplexity. So I'm just hoping it, uh, it answers quickly enough. So we'll start. And I'm not gonna do ABCs. Uh, because I think it'll answer fine. It's been answering in a way where I can uh, get the um, the answers relatively quickly. So while it's doing that, let me get the next one ready. Uh, correct is, and it'll give me like a bold-faced thing. Oh wait, the minimum frequency of electron. Minimum, that one I think. Yeah, all right. Uh, next question. Let me get the, ooh, so that I gotta type. All right. Because okay, so these mathematical expressions just won't copyright. Can I type that or no? Uh, no, let me not try to save time that way. Um, so on this question, Wavelength to one fourth, so momentum quadruples because photon is relativistic, energy will also quadruple. Uh, I probably should have put, you know, energy of the photon increases by factor of 16 as a, one of the options to kind of confuse people. But it's fine. <laughs> oh. Although, uh, yeah, 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 I think that's how it works. Increases by a does it say quadruples? Yeah, quadruples. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, in the next one, I gotta type velocity mass m is equal to 1.67 times 10 to the minus 20 kilogram is not is uh, h is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule second and one angstrom is equal to 10 to the minus 10 meter. Okay, and I gotta type in the choices. A is a V is equal to 2.0 um, times 10 to the minus 16 meters. B is, v is equal to 5.0 times 10, uh, 15, 10 to the 15 meter. C so is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3 meter. B equal to 7.9 times 10 to the 2 meter. All right. Um, based on my number sense, I would say um, something like, I think this one, 7.9 10 times 10 to the 2. Because um, uh, I know in this is like ultra cold neutron. It's a neutron that's been slowed down a lot. And, um, and this is the speed of a neutron that's been slowed down a lot. Like this speed is not achievable, but this is doable. So now to get an actual correct answer, <laughs> you should do, probably do a calculation. But this is my sense of uh, what the correct answer should be. Yeah. Probably got it right. 
Yeah, but I, I'm kind of using knowledge that you are not expected to have about ultra cold neutrons. <laughs> that was kind of my field of research uh, when I was in grad school. Um, and part of a, a neutron EDM collaboration that was using an ultra cold neutrons to measure the parity and time reversal symmetry violating electric dipole moment of the neutron. One of the things you gain uh, when you do things like research is just the memorizing random numbers that were important in your research, but in no other context, like you know, knowing the wave, the kind of the momentum speed of uh, uh, like ten angstrom neutron, like in no other context is that useful. Uh, okay, here it's while very weak, while very weak. Okay. Like, I'm not bothering to understand what it's saying because I'm cheating. You shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Uh, electron volt, what is one electron volt in SI unit? A1 EB is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. V, that's not even the correct unit. 1 EB is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Not even the correct unit. <laughs> 1 EB is equal to 2.56. That's not even the correct number. I think that number comes from the Euler's number E. Um, so that's probably correct unit though. EV is equal to 1.6. Yeah, that is the correct answer. Minus 19 joule uh, in electron volt cannot be expressed in SI units. All right, how much time do I have? Okay. Four or five minutes or so, I think. Yeah, I gotta go faster. But the purple exit is being slow today, so I don't know if I can go faster. All the, all the typing stuff I had to do doesn't help. Yeah, got the correct answer. Next question. And I think if I just copy and paste to this, that'll work fine. There should be some accessibility feature that'll describe that in words. Although that mathematical expression won't paste well, so I gotta check that. Is at 99% of the mass occupies only 1%. I don't think that's incorrect. Yeah, that is incorrect. It's actually more uh, extreme than that. So, yeah. Okay, we show the following within 2 times the delta x. Uh, decorative figure, yeah, the uncertainty. Oh, I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. Right. So, how much time? Uh, three minutes, yeah, still gotta go faster. I might run out of time. Uh, this perplex is being slow. One, two, three. Let's see. Um, this is one of the reasons not to cheat because whether perplex to epsilon will be fast or slow, you got no control over that. But, um, you know, if you learn physics and you can answer this yourself, then, you know, that you have control over, not, uh, you know, how a particular AI platform is performing uh, server load wise. So whichever questions we were unable to answer, we'll chalk that up to uh, purple X day not being perfect. That it really should have been faster. It's, I, so we'll, after this, we'll do this again and I'll beat purple X this time. Is forming, forming, okay, this one. All right, let's go to the next one. I'm not bothering to read the rest because, you know, I'm cheating and I'm not bothering to understand what the responses are. Uh, I hope it'll give me uh, two minutes. I think I have enough time. No, I don't have enough time. I've got three questions and two minutes. That's not enough time. Oh. I hope a perplex this faster. Um, it's the last question. I also have to type stuff. I might not get to the last question, we'll see.
so slow. It's just today. I wonder if it's gonna poke out. <laughs> so I could read and try to get an answer myself. Incorrect. Position is near the. Um, nope, this is this is incorrect. So that would be the correct choice. Um, and then here, um, the correct expression for psi squared would be eps Yeah, this one. Because um, this uh, in the, the the complex conjugate times that this exponential factor all cancel out. So uh, if when I do run out of time, I know what the correct answers for those last two will be. I just hate seeing you know last result that's less than perfect. So ten, let me just check what I know is the correct answer, and for nine, we'll wait for perplexity to give me an answer. You got thirty seconds, and. Um, in the last five seconds or so, if it hasn't given me anything. Or let me uh, actually select first. Wait, what? Oh, I skipped question eight. Uh, come on. Uh, or I, no, I'm waiting for it to. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, do I have time? Uh, ran out of time. Yeah, so if. So perplexity would have gotten 70%. Let's see if the answer it gives correctly describes. Yeah, that is correct statement. Um, yeah. So so of all the questions it answered, it answered correctly. So, you know, it would have gotten 70% um, or 80% if this answer got entered. And all the questions that it answered, it answered correctly. It's just that it didn't get to everything. <laughs> so, um, so question eight, you know, correctly describes, and yeah, that's correct. And I think the rest are incorrect. So let me do it this way. Uh, let me just uh, um, go through questions. So it's kind of scroll, scroll uh, slowly through questions one through seven. So you know those questions that it obviously got right that you can see that it's right. No, 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 no. It got. 80% right? No, 90%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the one that it missed is one that I didn't answer because of time right now. So let me scroll through one through. Um, and I think I had a one more uh, thing there. Let's see. Not home library. Because I had to switch. No. Oh, okay. Actually, I think uh, that is the uh, question number one. So yeah. Yeah, so I'll just uh, slowly scroll through. So for questions one through seven, uh, you can kind of see it's uh, uh, answer and reasoning. It got the answer correct, so I'm going to assume that its reasoning is correct enough. That's question two. And the answer and the reasoning. Question three. And the answer and the reasoning. Question... Wait, what? What is it talking about? Uh, the external system analysis. What? I have no idea what it's talking about. <laughs> uh, I, maybe it's doing some additional double check. That's what this is referring to. Otherwise, this is... Uh, I have no idea what this sentence is even referring to. Um, in any case, you know, I answered it correctly. Maybe that's why it's a slower. They made some improvement in terms of its accuracy, and that's uh, costing them some time. So question four, and the answer and explanation for question four. Question five, and answer and explanation for question five. Question six, and answer and explanation for question six. Question seven, and answer and explanation for question seven. And question eight, that was the last one, that time to answer. 
answer and explanation for question eight. And now finally, um, so we got the questions right because I answered it for it. But let's just uh, go through the exercise if we have time. And you know, this kind of use is actually um, uh, academically honest. So let's say you answered it and you're not sure, did I get it right? You can ask, you know, something like I answered, uh, let me do this. I answered A, uh, B, C, E. I answered it A, a B, uh, is that correct? If it is, uh, can you explain why it's correct? And other choices are incorrect. So, like this is uh, would be an actual example of uh, academically honest, productive use of generative AI. Um, you are just reviewing your work, and you are you need someone else to tell you, you know, did you get this right? And you know, it's the kind of question that you would ask me. I can answer it also, but you know, when you, unless you are in my office hour, my answer won't be immediate because. You know, if you send me a Canvas message, although I try to answer physics questions quickly, it's not going to be immediate. Um, the per advantage of a system like a Perplex is that you get an immediate response or, you know, after some waiting time. Immediate enough, more immediate than my mine would be. All right, let's look at how it's answering. So you should say it's correct. Yeah, correct. And here's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's an incorrect statement, which means it's a correct answer. <laughs> you gotta kind of get that straight. So it's an incorrect statement, and the other choices are correct statements. Um, so Heisenberg uh, fundamentally links, yeah. And, uh, that's not quite the right statement. Um, so complementary property will be uncertain. Like that is what uncertainty principle means. Your act of measuring one property has disrupted its particle state and the complementary property has been disrupted. So um, that part is, so A, um, other statements are correct with a very good momentum. Yeah, that is correct. Good. See if the particles change. Yeah, next, momentum no longer means, yeah, yeah. So that's a kind of, so yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so this is what I was saying, you know, when you measure one property, it's a complementary property, like momentum. It's, com it's uh, um, what do we call it? There's a word for it in quantum mechanics. Um, it's um, something conjugate. Conjugate variable? Um, sorry, it's been a while. It, it's a kind of term we use in upper digital quantum mechanics, and uh, I haven't thought about upper digital material for a while. Um, but so, so the you measure one property, the complementary property is um, disrupted, so it no longer remains precisely determined. That is correct. Uh, wavelength is also the result. Yeah, yeah, because momentum and wavelength are uh, related through the Broglie relation. Yeah, good. Yeah, statement is incorrect. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, so this is actually right. The uncertainty principle does not detect the uncertainty of subsequent measurement of the same property. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, what does measurement even mean? So when you repeat a measurement like uh, immediately, then you should get the same measurement. Good. So this is actually a correct statement, but I guess here, um, um, here this sentence is just wrong. Just, just take it out, and it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Let's uh, look at the last question. Um, so I gave you the correct answer. Let me have a perplexity give the correct explanation. Probably. <laughs> a function psi x t equal to a exponential i times kx, or let me just minus omega t. Um, what is the correct expression for psi x t squared? A psi yeah, there was no way I had enough time to do this.
squared is a squared. Like this is the kind of result you might get. Uh, well, the first one is the kind of result you might get if you just simply squared it, not absolute value squared. And I think if I want you to trick it, I should have put in just simply a squared. Or maybe I should do that. Like I wouldn't ask you this because you know it's a way too tricky. But let me make it tricky for uh, perplexity, and let's see how it does. So the tricky choice would be e, where I say psi x t squared is equal to a squared. It's very similar to this correct choice, but mathematically they are not the same. This shouldn't be selected because a could be complex. Nothing says a doesn't a is real. So, all right. Like especially in this form, you know, there's no phase factor here. So any phase factor you would have folded into a, which means a could really be complex. So just simply squaring it doesn't give you a the definite uh, like positive and real number that you expect uh, to get out of this. Yep, correct answer. Yeah, it wasn't confused by my, my uh, tricky choice of e. Yeah, that, that's correct. Good. Yeah, and I guess it doesn't go into why the other ones are incorrect. Um, all right, good. Um, so that's, uh, I think, uh, it for this uh, particular attempt. So let me um, do this one more time without perplexity and uh, just demonstrate that man versus machine. Man is still better. <laughs> At least, you know, someone who's trained. Uh, or on an easy questions of this type. I am going to use calculator. That's why I have Wolfram Alpha here. Uh, anytime there's calculation involved, I will save myself some time by not having to look up numbers. Um, so let me give this a second try. I'm hoping to get 100% in a time less than 10 minutes. So let me just, I, I'm going to try to speed run it, you know, go through it as quickly as I can. So I won't be explaining a lot of stuff because explanation takes time. So let me just go through it quickly. Uh, ready, set, go. H play. It doesn't have unit, it's energy times time. Yeah, proportional to H. Often, actually. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of scenario actually happens quite frequently, just not in this case. Proton accelerated, okay. So proton is more massive, which means um, I'm relying on, do I want to explain it? Let, yeah, let me just write it down. Uh, I'm relying on this uh, expression. Kinetic energy is P squared over 2N. So both particles have the same kinetic energy, which means more massive particle would have greater momentum. So with the lambda being h over p, greater momentum means shorter wavelength. So proton should have shorter de Broglie wavelength. Right. Niels Bohr is correct contribution. Bohr model, that's one. And it's the one we teach, uh, which will be this one. This is probably um, dynamically generated. There's a, like a particular scientist who could have come up who matches one of these. So it's not always going to be Niels Bohr. It could be someone else. Ultraviolet catastrophe is... Um, yeah, it has to do with uh, uh, incorrect predict predictions as short, short wavelength or high frequency. Um, increasing difference as short wavelength. Yeah, that's the one. Let me just double check. Yeah, no, it's a theoretical catastrophe that doesn't actually happen. Um, inability to clear. Properties of short wavelength image, that's fine. Uh, between these two, this is a better choice because this specifically mentions thermal radiation. Uh, yeah, so this is a joke choice. All right, uh, the wavelength of the moon. Um, so that times that is something like seven times 10 to the 25 um, in the momentum unit. Uh, so it, this divided by that, oh, that's fantastically small. Either be, choice of between this and that. 
So minus 34, minus 25. I think it's this one. Uh, if I get one thing wrong and it's that, it's because I didn't use calculator. Just did a mental math. Uh, yeah. All right, velocity of a, uh, let me just double check. Yeah. Velocity of a uh, five angstrom proton. Uh, I did, so five angstrom neutron, five angstrom proton, same deal. This is what my number sense tells me from my knowledge of ultra cold neutrons, which you are not expected to have, but you can plug in the numbers. You are not speed running. Uh, quantum tunneling is used. Okay, we tunnel phenomena speeds up the reaction process. It's not quite speed up. It makes a reaction process that's actually impossible. Um, but let's see. It might still be this one. Let me read the other choices. Electron may be found inside an atomic nucleus. Now that is actually true, but it's not about tunneling. Um, there's no Coulomb repulsion between electron and proton. So. Um, um, slight file. Yeah, whenever you say hear the word violation of energy, you should uh, default into saying, "Oh, that must be wrong," and that's wrong. So, yeah, no violation of energy allowed anywhere. If you read the uh, David Griffith's um, upper division textbook, Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, he explains how you know you should not <laughs> take up that kind of explain interpretation. Transfer of one location to another location. Yeah, this is a better description than that one. Yeah, so I would go with this one. Yeah, if this didn't exist, I might go with that one. But this is the better description, classically forbidden region. Yeah, yeah. All right, particle of mass sounds like proton. Uh, <laughs> confined by shock within that minimum kinetic energy. Oh, uh, this. Uh, let me just do it in a cal. So I do happen to have this uh, uh, energies memorized. <laughs> So the energy levels of uh, minimum kinetic energy, so that's ground state energy, that's going to be H divided by wavelength, uh, not wavelength, uh, 8 times mass times L squared. I happen to have this memorized, oops, H squared. So let me just spell this out. Planck's constant squared, 8 times mass, so it's going to be 1 GeV per C squared. Squared. I'm going to rely on Wolfram about to do unit conversion 1.5 e to the minus 14 meter squared. And uh, if I misremember the formula, it'll show up in um, the units not working out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, units work out to joules, and I'm looking for one in MeV 0 0.86 MeV. That must be correct. Probably close enough. Uh, I'm a little bit worried that it's a uh, Eight five, or it might be a rounding error here. So, um, yeah, I think I did it right. Yeah. I'm relying on my memory. Uh, if I miss the two questions, it's that one above and this one where. Wait, why am I trying to copy? So, um, comparing this with the the energy level formula I have memorized, energy of the the simple harmonic oscillator being n plus one half h bar omega so five halves would be I think that's two plus one half um, so that's uh, how many so the n can go all the way down to zero so there's n equals one and n equals zero state so the lower energy levels um, there's two of them um, yeah and not an infinite number Okay, schematic, the time tunneling, okay, um, yeah, energy, which are the uh, couples, decreasing, um, wait, how much time do I have? All right, good. Um, decreasing the particle energy while increasing the barrier width. Can, no, because both of these will tend to reduce the tunneling weight, so no, not that one. Increasing the energy while lowering the barrier height reduces no, that's the like exact opposite of that. Um, increasing the barrier height while reducing the barrier. Yeah, yeah. Because increasing the barrier height will tend to uh, decrease the transmission rate. But if you narrow the width, you can kind of change those to the same way so that um, so that the, the transmission rate uh, remains the same. Increasing the barrier height. Increase. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, that feels like the intuitively the correct answer. Let me make sure I answer the all the uh, ones. Yeah. So let me submit it. I did this in like uh, eight minutes. Not quite as fast as it could have been, like five minutes, but 
uh, let's hope I got 10 out of 10. If I didn't, then, you know, let's ask perplexity what I missed. <laughs> but yeah, I got 10 out of 10. Good. So uh, I was able to do it faster, and but not more accurately. Perplexity has gotten good. Uh, if I had to guess, it's probably slower right now because of like the additional checks they put in that must be helping it get more correct answers, but also it's making it slower. So, so right, that's I think all the attempt of the multiple choice timed assessment I will do.